Well, hello. As the saying goes, waste your time wisely. So today I will be teaching you how to make sodium hydroxide from regular table salt. Well, that was a complete lie. We can't use table salt, as most table salt is iodized, or has some potassium salts mixed into it. Instead, I would recommend using this other type of salt, uh, pickling salt. Works much better for this process, instead of the table salt. Well, in theory, we can use salt, which is iodized. Just as long as there is no potassium in it, so there is no contamination going on in the result. Anyway, talking aside, let's actually get to this. What you will need for this process is an electrolyzer. Here is mine. I made this thing out of two cups and a pipe, all which I hot glued together at 2 a.m. while listening to Limp Biscuit. What else am I to do? Buy one? I cut a hole in the cups and pass the tube through them. So if I pour washer inside of this thing, this would happen. The performance of mine is similar to me during a math test. We run for a while and then we break down. I'll probably be making another one in the future, but for now I will have to stick with this. So to actually start the process, you need to grab something which can be used as a membrane for this process. A piece of cotton should work just fine. Compared to what you believe, I would not recommend making the cotton membrane too thick. Just enough so it kind of stays in there when water is poured in on one side. The only reason it is there is to stop the products from reacting. So you make it thin, uh, so there's not much resistance, so the current is stronger and thereby increasing the reaction rate. Now, you will need to make a salty solution to actually put into the electrolyzer. This process is not too hard as it consists of only water and salt. Like, you can't possibly mess this up. So this process is quite simple. You pour some... You mix some. You don't even need safety goggles like chemistry teachers tell you. Now, after some thorough mixing, we get this concentrated solution of salt water. This is quite saturated, meaning it's roughly as salty as my ex. Now gently pour the water in on both sides of the apparatus, so the cotton membrane, which is now over here, does not get blown out. It's my other cup. After which, you need to find two materials which can be used as electrodes. Most people use pencil lead, but I use a copper pipe holder and an, alum and an aluminum plate, which I hammered into shape out of a wire. Pencil lives matter. The actual reason I'm using these instead of pencil lead is that they have a higher surface area than just a piece of pencil lead. And higher surface area makes current stronger. Now, if you're going to use my ghetto solution, I would recommend maxing out the surface area on these things however possible, as a higher surface area means a higher current. Now, if you are hoping to get hydrochloric acid out of this reaction, you definitely need to use pencil lead instead of aluminum, as carbon does not react with chloride in any way. We, however, right now are focused on making sodium hydroxide instead of hydrochloric acid. I'll go over how to make that in a separate video. Now what you need to do is to dip the electrodes into opposite cups, like this. Now we attach a 9 volt battery to this thing, uh, negative on copper, positive on the aluminum side, to light it up. You should notice nearly immediately that on the side with the copper, there is small bubbles beginning to rise. That would be hydrogen. So basically what's happening here is that the sodium chloride is getting ripped apart into sodium and chloride ions. As sodium is a highly reactive metal, it reacts with water to produce... Um, Sodium hydroxide and hydrogen, gas which we can see coming out right here. The other side, over here, 
is releasing chloride. So the other electrode is releasing chloride, but because the electrode is made out of aluminum, oh, the chloride is reacting with the aluminum, making aluminum chloride instead of releasing a lot of chloride gas. Some air is coming out, but not much by any means. If instead we were using a graphite electrode, graphite would not react with the chloride whatsoever, resulting in the production of chloride gas. Chloride gas, pure chloride gas, well, it lives up to its history as a chemical weapon. Imagine smelling a pool in the summer, except three times worse. That's basically what chloride gas is. Do not breathe it in, that's my advice. Now then, what we need to do is leave this reaction on to continue for the night. So then, in the morning when we will wake up, we'll have a cup full of aluminum chloride and a cup full of sodium hydroxide. Now in the morning, we pour this juice of sodium hydroxide, which is right here, and the aluminum chloride out into two empty cups. So, It honestly doesn't matter what cup the sodium hydroxide is in. A sodium hydroxide is a pretty stable element, is a pretty stable molecule to most metals, meaning it doesn't react with iron cups, copper cups, nothing like that. Now we take this cup of sodium hydroxide and we need to pour it into a pot to be able to boil it successfully. So we can remove all of the water, so we can evaporate all the water and just leave sodium hydroxide and salt inside of it. Now, as I am boiling this, I forgot to mention, there is no need to filter this through a coffee filter, like what you usually do during a chemical experiment, as there is nothing insoluble in this. Now, as we are nearing the end of the boiling, meaning there's hardly any water left, we can look inside of this pot and see that most of the water has disappeared and that we are left with only a fine sludge of salt and sodium hydroxide. Now, if we scrape a lot of the fine sludge off of the pot, we get this mixture, which is mostly salt, but has a bit of sodium hydroxide inside of it. Now, if we mix a little of the resulting sodium hydroxide with water, we get this solution. We can test out that, is in f that it is in fact basic by pouring a bit of pH indicator inside of it. You see how it becomes green? That's an indication that the solution is basic meaning that we did, in fact, get sodium hydroxide. Now, how to turn the sodium hydroxide into sodium, I'll do next time. Probably in my next video, maybe some other video. Well, stay tuned to see how it turns out. See ya, till next time.